Right. Oh my god, hey! I hope you're all having a lovely afternoon in this very warm British weather if you are in the UK and watching my channel. If you are seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe. I'm obsessed with all things theatre. This is my stage YouTube channel and my Kingdom of Isolation, which, uh, you can't not laugh at right now. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining some of the recent theatre news with shows like Cinderella having to close in the West End the day of their press night, uh, Hairspray, Prince of Egypt, The Six UK Tour, Wanderville, Kenneth Branagh's The Browning Version, so many different shows having to close in the West End for short periods because of COVID regulations. If you don't understand what's going on, I'm going to explain it to you all today and why this needs to change. We're gonna be talking about COVID regulations in the UK, how it's affecting the theatre industry. This tends to evoke a lot of strong opinions. Everyone has their own perspective on this. I don't have the answers on this. I don't know that anyone does. I'm not gonna be asserting that I have the answers on this. I'm really just here to explain what is happening, why it's an issue, and why this might need to be readdressed. I respect everyone having a different opinion on this, and I really don't hope for this to be contentious or for any of the responses to this video to be contentious either. Everyone's a human being, everyone has their own perspectives, fears, anxieties, insecurities about their own health and safety during this time and moving forwards. So for my American viewers, let me explain what's going on. As of around May this year, some West End shows have been able to reopen. The way that they've been able to do this is the government have put certain things in place, like a cap at 50% capacity. Theatres weren't able to have more than 50% of the auditoriums filled, which meant the seating arrangements were socially distant. There was no one sat either side of your party or usually in front of or behind you. In some theatres, they actually moved the rows to make them farther apart. It was also mandatory that you wore a mask the entire time you were inside the theatre unless you were eating or drinking. The ushers in almost every theatre I went to were very hot on this, and again, people had conflicting feelings about whether or not this was a good idea because people have conflicting feelings about mask wearing. I am entirely pro mask wearing. I've worn a mask in the theatre. I will probably continue to wear a mask in the theatre moving forwards, at least for a little while. I think it's just a good way of respecting other people's health. There's really nothing else more I can say about it than that. There are also temperature checks and everyone going into the theatre. All of the cast and crew were getting regularly tested. There was a, a pre-arrival questionnaire that was sent out to ticket holders, asking them if they had any symptoms, if they were feeling well, if they'd come into contact with anyone with COVID. They were given the opportunity to do a free exchange to another performance. Many, many things have been put in place to allow some West End shows to reopen to a certain extent. It's worth saying as well that almost all of the shows that did this were then operating at something of a loss as a result. And I don't know the finances of every West End show involved, but you have to assume with a 50% capacity that they were possibly operating at a loss. The change comes today, Monday 19th of July, when the UK is celebrating Freedom Day and many of the COVID-19 restrictions that had been put in place are disappearing, including the mandating of mask wearing. Many theatres are advising their patrons it is still advisable to wear a mask for the duration of their visit to the theatre, but it can no longer be considered strictly mandatory. There's a lot of different approaches happening by different theatre companies, but the biggest difference for theatre goers this week is that when they go and sit in auditoriums, it will be a full 100% capacity audience. People have different feelings about this. A lot of people are very anxious about this as a concept. Other people are thrilled about it. A lot of producers have been advocating for this and will really welcome this change, Andrew Webber especially. But there is still a big problem that is facing the West End theatre industry amongst all of this and has been for around the last month. So in the UK, we have this app. This app, as well as giving you updates on the latest ever-changing regulations, both regionally and nationally, has a Bluetooth interfacing system where, and I think I'm saying this correctly, but it's very confusing and no one really knows. If you are in proximity of someone who has tested positive and you're within two meters of them for more than 15 minutes uninterrupted, it will advise you that you have been in contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19 and you should isolate for 10 days from the point of exposure. This is the pinging that everyone is talking about. And while we're talking about this, I hate that word and I never need to hear it again. These exposure notifications are a way of letting people know they may potentially be at risk of contracting COVID-19 because they've potentially been exposed to it, but it doesn't necessarily take into account the precautions that existed, whether you were wearing a mask, whether they were wearing a mask, what sort of distance it was, what sort of time period it was. It doesn't provide as much information. Now, the way that this affects West End performances, if one person in the cast of West End shows tests positive for COVID-19 
and case numbers are rising upsettingly quickly in the UK at the moment. What this means per the company's risk assessment is that the entire cast and crew will have to isolate. This seems to be the policy based on what we're seeing from various places. I think the first people that this affected were Hairspray. Shortly after their opening night, Hairspray had to shut down for many performances because a crew member had tested positive for COVID-19. Even though the show had had its opening, was very successful, people were very excited to go and see it, they were still managing to run with a socially distanced audience, they had to stop because one person had tested positive. I don't remember the exact order that it happened in, but we then went on to see this in many subsequent shows. Two plays at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre have been taken down because of this. The Seven Methods of Killing Kylie Jenner at the Royal Court had to shut for a few days for the same reason. Prince of Egypt in the West End. I was due to go and see it, but I was also actually isolating because I had been pinged on the day I had been to see another theater event. I was very disappointed because that meant I wasn't going to be able to go and see the Prince of Egypt. As it happened, the day I was meant to go and see it, it got shut down by COVID as well. Hairspray and the Prince of Egypt at the time of me filming this video are both currently closed. A new show called Wanderville that was set to open at the Palace Theatre has had to delay their opening. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat at the Palladium had to do the same thing because their rehearsal process had been disrupted by COVID. The Kenneth Branagh Theatre Company are currently producing a revival of the Browning version at a venue called the Riverside Studios and their rehearsal process was so disrupted by various members of the company being exposed to COVID-19 that they have had to cancel the entire run of that play. The Six UK tour has had to cancel their week of performances in Hull this week because of exposure to COVID-19. Which brings us to today and Angela Webber's Cinderella. I swear I spend half of the time on my channel talking about this show, which I still have not seen. Today was meant to be the press night for Angela Webber's Cinderella at the Gillian Lynn Theatre. It was deliberately made to coincide with Freedom Day because Andrew Lloyd Webber has been very vocal about the fact that he would like to see full audiences able to come into theatres. He thinks the theatre industry is being disproportionately punished in comparison with sports events like we saw with fans crowding at Wembley and various other elements of the country. So on Saturday, when audiences arrived at the Gillian Lynn Theatre for the matinee performance, they were told that both shows that day would unfortunately have to be cancelled because of COVID-19. I saw this on social media and immediately alarm bells started ringing in my head. Incidentally, those were stagey alarm bells, which sound a lot like Starlight Express. And the reason for this is every other announcement we've seen has been for a period of 10 days after the exposure that shows have had to shut down for a significant length of time because of the isolation rules. Cinderella, meanwhile, was asserting that they were going to cancel their performances for Saturday but still reopen this evening, Monday, for their press night Freedom Day performance. But the reason was still COVID-19. So immediately I'm thinking, why is this show behaving differently under discernibly the same circumstances? Cut to today, where even though they have been rehearsing in the understudy for Prince Charming, the actor, I assume, is the one who tested positive for COVID and is having to isolate himself. Even though this guy's been in rehearsals all day, the announcement was made earlier this afternoon that the press night would not be going ahead and that this week's run of performances would be canceled. Andrew Lloyd Webber himself put out a statement that really reads as though the entire run of the show is being canceled, which is not the case. I think what's happening here is he is trying to provoke outrage and shock that this is happening and sort of bash it into people's heads that these are unrealistic conditions that the theatre should be expected to continue in. That's why he's tried to make it a very shocking statement. He refers to the blunt instrument that is the government's track and trace system. What had actually happened at Cinderella is even though the policy is that if one member of the cast is testing positive, everyone else has to isolate for a 10 day period, they had all been PCR tested. As it happens, they all tested negative, according to the press release. This unfortunately does not carry much weight in terms of offsetting the isolation advice. Andrew was hoping that showing that they had all tested negative would mean the performance would be allowed to continue this evening. I'm not sure who he was having this conversation with, whether it really is the powers that be high up in government, given his background as a member of the House of Lords, to play devil's advocate for the tiniest second, and I'm really not supporting really any of the government legislation at play here. But because the incubation period for COVID COVID-19, I believe is still considered to be up to 14 days, the entire cast could test negative today and 
could feasibly all be positive within the next week. That's why a 10 day isolation period is being advised. It used to be two weeks isolation, then it was changed to 10 for arbitrary reasons. Again, if you know the answer and I'm misquoting the entire situation, let me know. I half wondered if Ivano Turco had actually tested positive or been exposed to COVID-19 earlier in the show's preview period because he was missing for a consecutive series of performances, which is very unusual for a principal performer in previews. And he was gone for a suspiciously long time. I think they said something about him injuring his thumb, questionable. So I had sort of quietly been thinking that maybe he had tested positive himself or was having to isolate based on exposure to someone else who wasn't in the show, and they just didn't want to say that. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Andrew Lloyd Webber himself had told them not to acknowledge uh, what the app had said to them based on outside exposure, because he didn't want the entire show to be taken down. And fair enough, because it's ridiculous that this many people's livelihoods should be affected based on one ping, it seems crazy. At the same time, I don't have a better system that I can suggest or recommend. But I'm also not being paid to come up with one, so... As this week goes on, there are more West End shows set to reopen under normal conditions at full capacity. Anything Goes at the Barbican, Come From Away set to reopen at the Phoenix Theatre. It will be really interesting to see how many of these are actually able to reopen and how long they stay open for. Because as case numbers are rising, as people are going back to nightclubs, back to restaurants, back to gyms, back to theatres, without social distancing, without masks, surely we will only see case numbers continue to rise. And all it takes is for one member of the cast to test positive and it takes down the entire production for a week and a half. I don't need to tell you that this is not a sustainable way for theatre to continue. The financial uncertainty that this puts everyone in is just too great. Producers are already taking serious financial risks to bring these shows back at all. It's going to massively dissuade anyone and hugely impact the producers that have made these decisions to try and carry on in the first place. As it stands, Hairspray is set to reopen, Prince of Egypt is set to reopen, Cinderella will be reopening next week is currently the plan. None of these big West End shows are permanently cancelled. They are all just having to temporarily suspend performances. So they will be back, but it's hugely uncertain how long they will be back for before this happens again. We're set to see possibly a very uncertain summer of West End theatre. And bearing that in mind, while I would love to encourage everyone to support the theatre industry as much as possible, you sort of acknowledge when you're buying tickets and making travel plans and booking hotels that we're still in this period of uncertainty. The same way we know that booking foreign travel is not guaranteed right now. That should be your attitude to West End Theatre. Because I'm seeing so many people who are finding out that their tickets are being cancelled or exchanged or moved to other performances, who are incandescent with rage. There was an awful tweet from someone who had come down to see Cinderella and my heart goes out for the fact that they had booked a hotel and that they have spent their own money to do this and to travel, but they actually said, I don't care about the health of the performers, I care about this money that I've spent. That is an awful way to think. I tweeted about this and uh, my lovely friend The Breaker Leggers replied to say that not everyone deserves theatre, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. If this is your attitude towards the people that you are paying to be entertained by, if you think of them as nothing more than performing monkeys who could be completely susceptible to a virulent, hugely infectious disease, and you do not care, I have no sympathy for you as a human being, and you don't deserve the beautiful, incredible art form that is theatre. I think that's going to be my last words on this for today, because otherwise I'm only going to become angrier at this situation. If there are any particular shows you would like to know more information about, let me know in the comment section. I will do my best to explain it for you. If there's anything else you would like to add for your input on this situation, let me know in the comments section as well. Thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope this helped explain to you the situation as it is currently going on. I hope you're not dissuaded from buying West End tickets. If you're traveling from further afield, there are plenty of other shows that I'm optimistic you'll be able to get tickets for last minute if something is canceled. With the exception of Cinderella, all of the cancellations have been with a reasonable amount of notice, I believe. I promise whatever you're traveling to see, there are other shows that you will love, that you will enjoy, that you can go and support in the West End. If you would like to find out more about some of the other shows that are currently playing in the West End. I've reviewed a bunch of them for my channel, so subscribe to my stage YouTube channel, go and have a look at those videos. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!